Hello friends, welcome back to the shop, and happy International Pipe Smoking Day. Today is February 2nd, 2020, and it is International Pipe Smoking Day. I hope you're all enjoying it. I hope you all took advantage of some of the online sales, and that you didn't take too much advantage of the online sales. I am smoking a Medico VFQ, very fine quality, and I'm smoking Sir Walter Raleigh. Hard to say with the pipe in your mouth. Sir Walter Raleigh. Uh, this pouch was a gift from my friend Mark in Rhode Island, and it's kind of interesting. This uh, Just prior, you know, a few months back, uh, Padre Piper was kind enough to have sent me a pouch of this, and I was just finishing that when Mark's uh, package arrived and there was a, another pouch so the guys are keeping me well stocked in this and it's a it's a wonderful tobacco it's great you know OTC burley one very very deep flavor very very strongly burley and I like it a lot so I chose these two intentionally today because I wanted to talk about one of my favorite topics, codgers. <laughs> so some of you might recall I did a video back in November uh, entitled something like, Do We Romanticize or Do We Overly Romanticize Pipe Smoking? Uh, video got a lot of views and lots and lots of comments and, and everything else, and I enjoyed it. I I, you know, I still believe what I said in the video, and most most of the comments were, were very positive. In fact, they were all positive. Uh, some were very positive. Uh, but you know the bottom line, and I don't. I said this in the video. I actually went back and watched it recently, and I, I said this, but I don't think I said it strongly enough. The answer is yes, we do overly romanticize pipe smoking, but it doesn't matter. It's okay. You know, it's okay to overly romanticize it. Um, the only thing you want to watch out for is that you're not, you know, creating unreasonable expectations for people. But I don't want to get into that now. So I was thinking about this. And I was thinking, you know, in that video I said something, I was talking about, um, you know, you might decide that you're going to smoke a pipe because you saw Bing Crosby smoke a pipe. Now, you don't really believe that smoking the pipe is going to turn you into Bing Crosby or make you like Bing Crosby. But you feel a connection with him, and, and that's very important to us. Well, I've been thinking about that that connection and this sort of romanticization of the old codgers um, and you know why is it that we do it you know why do we have this this affection for these guys that most of us never knew guys that if we did know them would probably not give us the time of day because <laughs> they and I did know a few uh, well what do we know about them? so when we think of a, of a of an old codger, what are we thinking of? Well, I think we're thinking of a probably of a working man. You know, a guy that uh, that went to work every day and and kept his family supported that way. Uh, now maybe the older ones were retired, but they were retired probably from a hard job. You know, I I tend to think of things like uh, working in a shipyard or. Uh, you know, meat packing plants and uh, things like that. Uh, jobs of the 30s and 40s seem to be a lot harder in, in a lot of ways. And these guys were either doing that every day and then uh, maybe smoking a pipe while they were doing it. Probably smoking a pipe while they were doing it. Uh, and taking care of their families, enjoying their time off. So they were working men, but they were also family men, and that's that's important. You know, we always think about them with their grandchildren. That's that's kind of like this this uh, archetype that we have in mind. You know, it's this, this working man, you know, maybe coveralls and and the grandchildren and the pipe. Um, and that, that's I think that almost completely captures it. The, the final thing is their approach to pipe smoking, and that's one that's a bit harder to define because we didn't know the guys, but we've got, you know, I, I told you in that 
other video that I had witnessed this, and, and we have lots of stories about it, how these were guys that would buy one pipe, smoke it till it was unsmokable, throw it away, and go buy another pipe. And they would smoke one tobacco. Now, it wouldn't always be an over-the-counter blend. I saw them in tobacconists. Some of them even had their own blends that were made just for them. But they didn't mess around. They didn't try six different tobaccos a week or anything. And this Medico is interesting. I found an ad, and I'll, I'll put a picture in here. Uh, this ad is from 1961, and it shows the uh, the VFQ Medico uh, is in, is, well, first off, there's the the Crest pipes, and these were the, the high-end Medicos. They're 5 to $15 each. But then there's the other Medico filter pipes, and they range from $1.95 to $3.95. This is 1961, not that long ago. Uh, just five years before I was born. So, uh, And the VFQ is right in the middle of that range, so this pipe would have been $2.95, a $3 pipe. I haven't gone and corrected that for, for modern uh, day. Actually, I'm going to do that, and I will be. So I just checked with uh, the all-seeing Googler. And according to Google, if you take $3 in 1961, uh, today it would be worth about $25. So even in today's money, this is not, you know, it's hard to find a pipe for $25. I mean, you can find basket pipes and, and all, but, uh, you know, you're not getting a factory pipe for $25 anymore. Maybe it may be a gray bow, but I think even those have gone up above $25. So, these were essentially disposable pipes, and that's why they were smoked that way. You know, smoke them until you can't smoke them anymore. Throw them away and go get another one. So, what is it about these guys that we feel a bond with, that we, that we feel a connection with? Well... I think we've got actually a lot in common, and I think we as men look for that commonality in other men and look for it across time in, in, our, in our forefathers. Um, we, by and large, work. You know, that's a big part of our lives, and we identify with that. You know, that's, somebody says, what do you do? Nine times out of ten, the person responds with their job. Uh, so, I'm sorry, somebody says, what are you? Nine times out of ten, the person responds with their job. Uh, it's extremely important to men. Um, it's how we support our families. It's how we take care of our children. It's how we keep a house. So we work. And certainly the old cod has worked. We also, by and large, are family men. Um... You know, we're married, many of us have kids, many of us have grandchildren. That's an important part of our lives. Now, do we all smoke one pipe until it's dead and then go buy another one and only smoke one tobacco? No. I don't know anybody that claims to do that anymore. In fact, many of us are trying to save these old things from the trash, uh, you know, get the ones that they, they probably just threw in a drawer and try to bring them back to life. But we're kind of a product of our time. And you got to consider that. So no, we don't smoke just one tobacco because we don't have just one tobacco to choose from. We probably have more tobaccos to choose from right now than at any other time in history. And there are a few mouse clicks away, for the most part. We have a plethora of pipes to choose from. We have very fine affordable factory pipes. Companies like Sabinelli, for example. And we've got the overpriced factory pipes, too. You know, but we don't... 
that that's part of a different topic, I think. So I think we feel this connection with these guys because we really are a lot like them. We go to work, we do our jobs, we care for our families, we do what needs to be done, mow the lawn, wash the car, and we find something in this that makes all of that a little bit better. Now I talked about in the original video how I wonder if we're bringing something to the pipe rather than the pipe bringing something to us. And I thought about that a lot. And I've decided that at least for me, it's an artificial distinction. I can't say where I, my thought processes stop and the pipe's influence on me starts. I, I can't because, you know, I can only interact with the pipe through my thoughts. So I don't know if I'm having a better time right now because I'm smoking a pipe. Or I enjoy doing what I'm doing right now and whenever I do it, I smoke a pipe. You know, they're, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. I guess that's the point. It just doesn't matter. I guess what I'm trying to say on this International Pipe Smoking Day to all you guys out there, all you guys that go to work every day, that do what needs to be done, that, that take care and love your, your wife and your kids and your grandkids, that enjoy your pipes and enjoy your tobaccos, that you're not that different from the, the old codgers. You're really not. And you should take a little time to get in touch with your inner codger. I hope you had a great day, guys. Take care, and I'll see you on Friday.